What's going on hybrid shooters? It's Jason Long and today I want to do a breakdown of this wedding film that we shot back in March 2017. So basically what I'm trying to accomplish with this breakdown video is to share with you guys the Sony gears that we shot with, the techniques behind some of these shots, and the autofocus settings that we use because I get a lot of people asking me which focus mode I use the most. So I'll cover that topic extensively in this video. This is just sort of me testing out the waters and see how I want to structure the guide. So definitely hit that bell button to be notified when that video drops. In the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this one. Okay, we're opening the film with some drone shots of the venue. This was shot on the DJI Phantom 4 Pro and let me tell you guys, the image quality off the Pro is so ridiculously crisp because of that 1 inch sensor. I got the Mavic Pro shortly after and as much as I love the form factor of that little guy, the image quality doesn't even come close. Next scene we have the empty ceremony space and we're flying back out of the gazebo with the Zhiyun crane here and the A6500 with a 10 to 18 millimeter wide lens. Focus mode, we had it in wide because it's such a wide lens, even at f4, most of what's in the shot will be in focus anyway. Moving on to the next shot, same settings, and we pivoted around just to show how amazingly beautiful the view is. The bride and the groom were very lucky to have such a perfect day and perfect scenery for their wedding. By the way, the couple is Flora and Steven, amazing husband and wife now, and I really enjoyed shooting their wedding, and we'll talk about why in just a bit. So we got a shot of Flora holding the rings, nothing too fancy, but we were using the Sigma 18-35 art lens with the MC11 adapter for most of her prep shots. Now, in a lot of my videos, I've always mentioned the Sigma lenses are not silent focusing, so if you try to autofocus with these lenses when shooting videos, your mic is going to pick up the focusing noise, the But because we don't often use the audio during prep, it's not a huge deal to us. And here, we're hand-holding the camera and putting the A6500 IBIS to work. Focus mode, I wrote down center, but we might have manual focus for this one. Because when you're filming something that small, especially something so reflective like the rings, the camera will have some trouble staying focused on it, so in this case, it's better and faster to go manual. So now we finally get to see the couple. They're giving their vows here, and I've used that as a story element to highlight how they've met and how they got to this moment. Or at least that's what I hope they're saying. I, I don't know Mandarin, so I had Vivian translate and tell me where to cut. So hopefully uh, it makes sense. But anyways, this was shot with the A7R2 and the 7200 G Master. For the most part, I relied on facial recognition to maintain focus on his face. But I've also decided to use flexible spot focus large and pinned it around this area. If I had done wide or zone focusing, there's a possibility the focus will bounce back and forth to him, to the best man's face, or even the officiator if he gets back into frame, and we definitely don't want that. Having the spot focusing ensures our focus is locked on the groom. So same deal here with the over-the-shoulder shot of the bride. This is with the A7S II and the 70 200 F4. We likely just did manual focus for her because the autofocus on the A7S II is not as fast or accurate as the uh, A7R2 or the A6500. And in case you didn't know, the A7S II uses a different autofocusing system, which is contrast detection, whereas the other cameras, they use phase detection. Phase, not face, but phase. P H a S E, P H A S E, yeah, which is much better. And don't get me wrong, the A7S II can autofocus, but it's just a little bit slower. So just keep that in mind. But I still illustrated here what focus mode you should use, just in case you use a different Sony camera. So let's go ahead and fast forward through this highlight to the ring shots here. We used the A7S II with the 90mm macro. We also had the slider one with the motion module from Eldercron. And even though a lot of people complain that it's a tad bit too short, it's actually very perfect for any macro shots because when you get that close to an object, any subtle movement will seem massive on camera. Here's a quick tip, anytime you're shooting macro shots, Go manual focus. A few weddings back when we used the macro on the A6500, we found some parts of the shot pulsing around because we let it autofocus. When you have your camera on autofocus, it constantly looks for something in the frame to focus too, which is why you might see LED lights or TV screen pulsating in the background. When you're on wide, you probably won't notice it too much, but again, since we're so close to these rings and the depth of view is so shallow, the effect is magnified. 
Okay, here's my favorite part of the video and during the wedding day because one, we really nailed the first look and two, the excitement from the groom when he sees the bride for the first time was just priceless. The look on his face, you can just really tell he loves her. Let me just play a little bit of this out first and then we'll do a breakdown in a few seconds. 亲爱的严超成同学在这相恋的第五百零五天我们终于结婚了可能在同龄人眼里我们算是早婚闪婚但是我却觉得能够认识你与你相恋最后嫁给你是我这辈子最幸运的事情这个时间不早也不晚时间
All right, so they're walking up the aisle here after the first kiss, uh, center focusing and tracking backwards. If you ever do shots like this um, and want to go for that symmetry or close to symmetry look, best to do center or middle zone focusing. Uh, I don't know why I included this, but uh, cake shot. Uh, we did slider for this one. Oh, I made a mistake right here. It it might have been an A7S2, not an A6500, because I, I, I'm sure I'm pretty sure we used the 55 for this uh, for this shot. Uh, but again, if I were to shoot this, the zone focusing would have been on the right to focus on the cake. For first dance and parental dances, we rode two cameras, one close up and one wide. The wide is always going to be on the gimbal, twirling around the couple. Uh, again, center focusing and middle zone focusing. Uh, sorry, center focusing or middle zone focusing. Yeah, I know the, the lighting was awful here. And uh, we're almost done here. <laughs> and uh, probably everything is starting to feel very obvious, right? I mean, you can probably start guessing which most we... Uh, uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm losing it here. <laughs> yeah, this video is getting long and I'm getting very delirious just talking about... Um, just talking my head off about the, the focusing mode. But anyways... Um, yeah, can you guess which mode we used here? Yeah, if you say zone with face detection, you are the winner! Do, 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 do. Alright, you know what? Let's just let's just blaze through the last few scenes, alright? Let's just let's just get this over with. Drone, ACC 525 Battis. Uh wide right here, June Crane, 6500, 10 to 18. It's wide, wide. Uh, zone, zone, uh, wide. Uh, zone on the right and that's pretty much it I hope you guys found this helpful and that this was informative again a more comprehensive extensive autofocusing guide is coming very soon that one will of course have a more detailed explanations for each of the focusing mode as well as sample footage from different shoots this one right here is meant to tie you guys over until then and if you guys enjoyed this breakdown, I'm happy to do more. Just leave a comment down below letting me know, as well as the different topics that you want me to cover in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.